video, I'm just going to discuss a little bit about the background because we haven't really talked about background so far. So I've chosen a green object, an apple, just because we haven't really dealt with green, and put it on a blue fabric. Before we've just been dealing with a white fabric, which is nice and neutral. Actually, it's a little bit of a toned white fabric. And now we're going to do it against a, a blue fabric. So again, it's a lovely organic shape. I set my scale, and then the proportion is the height compared to the width, and it's a little bit wider. And because it's a lovely organic shape, straight on this side, and a little bit wonky on that side, which is really lovely. And then there's a lovely cast shadow here, and form shadow. So the cast shadow is the shadow that is cast from the object and form shadow is the shadow shape on the object. Generally the form shadow is a little bit more subtle whereas the cast shadow is very clear and it gets softer and more subtle as it moves away from the object. Again as always I'm going to block in the shadow mass just with a neutral non-coloured black. And then the apple is a lovely green, but it's quite a warm green. It's quite a yellow green. I don't have a warm green, so I'm going to have to add some yellow to my green. This is way too blue and too cold. It wouldn't be at all nice. So that's definitely not the end result. But I'm going to add this warm yellow and see whether that works on top. And that really does work on top. I haven't filled in the shapes, I'm still letting some of the um, the grey paper breathe through. So I'm just blocking this shape in here. So I'm actually quite surprised how quickly that became the right colour, those two colours together. It's a little bit too cold in here, I think we that bring that a little bit more. But perhaps it's looking cold as well because this colour isn't yet there, so let's make this one. A little bit truer. So even in the shadow it looks too cold, that colour. Perhaps the blue would be better just because even though it's the wrong colour it's a better temperature. I'm adding a little bit of yellow but obviously much less yellow because it's the shadow colour. So that's hopefully looking better. Now let's see if we add, let's first add the highlight because that's always fun, always makes the drawing interesting a little more. Let's add the highlight there. And let's see what happens when we change the background, when it makes it look more interesting. So obviously next to the light of the apple, this value appears slightly darker, whereas next to the dark it appears slightly lighter. So if I just put that down, It's a really great little mid-tone blue. Oopsie. And suddenly we start creating much more space around the apple. But to make it a little bit more dramatic, I've got to make it a push a little bit harder here. So it appears a little bit darker. And perhaps a little bit lighter. So we're talking about accents. Accents don't always have to be lines. It could also be to kind of emphasise this shape, I could pull this value up. So emphasising value also creates a nice little accent. So you see there that makes that bit pop out there a bit more. And then I also darkened this area here. I chose these colours before I came up um, from, from our studio shop and I see that I definitely love blues because I've got so many more blues than, than other colours. There we are. So do you see how putting the background in can make it look a little bit more exciting? I think I've got to do more on the base here because it's not sitting very well. So I'm just going to put the base down. And I'm going to add a bit more white to it as well to lighten it, just so that this nice cast shadow jumps out. And 
end, I'm also going to add some little accents in here. There's a really lovely accent down there, but I must remember that the accent mustn't become the contour. If I do accents there, I can't ignore the accents that are along here, which are really lovely. Too blue. Apparently we see many more greens than than other colours. There's a lovely bit of shape in here. So this is very simple. I've just kept it in the the, the blues. You know, sometimes I move the blues towards yellow to get the greens. I'm going to add some more colour. I really believe you don't need to add too much. Bit of red along the shadow edge. These are kind of putting the accents in um, through here. There we are, there's my apple. I think this edge is actually looking a bit too hard and not rounded enough. I'm just going to cut that shape off a bit. So with painting, there's a great author called Robert Henry, and he says painting and drawing is always about perfecting the start. So you're not, you're never going to the end of the painting. What you're always doing is just adding information to your start, and your start is your proportion and your values. Obviously, it's lovely to get the values correct in their colour first of all. But if we break it down to stepping stones, first of all, we get the the value correct in its value. So whether it's light or dark, because most people get confused about values and not colour. So most people might tend to over light in this area rather than keeping this should be more separate from this information. 